Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to be talking about all things bees. Now before we dive in too far into those, let's go ahead and maybe step away a little bit. Some of you who may have some phobias with respect to bees may not be a little comfortable us being so close to these stingy little boogers. But at any rate, now that we've backed away to a fairly safe distance, let's talk about bees a little bit. Here on Riverbend Springs, the American starting farm in Farming Simulator 25, we do have a few beehives pre-placed, and they can be found over here by the barn, as well as by a buildable shed. And also, here we have a pallet spawn point, where we're going to find a pallet of honey that is going to be spawning as we are playing our games. Now, I have gone ahead and removed that spawn point, because you can only have one per map. And I placed one down over here where I've got some other beehive stuff staged up. Now, bees are literally the easiest animal to keep in Farming Simulator 25 because they require nothing from you as far as an input. They are simply fine by just placing them down and they will spawn honey over time. But there is also another intrinsic benefit that you will get from these little guys. And that is with your flowering plants. So, sunflowers will get a yield of 5% simply by placing some beehives adjacent to those fields. Potatoes and canola will see a smaller increase of 2.5% if you place beehives adjacent to those fields. Now that information is coming to us from the Farm Sim Academy web pages, which can be found over at the Farm Sim website, because I remembered that we did get a bonus on flowering crops from bees. I just didn't remember what the percentages were. Now I am a little surprised because I would have thought that cotton would have been listed in there because I believe cotton does flower as it is growing. So I would have thought cotton would have been added to that benefit, but basically canola Sunflowers and potatoes are going to be crops that you will definitely see a yield boost if you go ahead and place some beehives adjacent to those fields. Now we have several different beehives of choice. And those of you who may be a little phobic of bees, maybe you want to turn down or mute the video for the next little bit so you don't hear the buzzing little buggers. But we have this little small beehive. We have a larger beehive. We have actually four hives sitting on a log. Kind of an interesting design there. Interesting design also for this little beehive. It's kind of sitting on some stone. Kind of a round structure there. We have more of a traditional American beehive. And we have some hives on racks. Also located there. And then here we have the beehive spawn point, or the honey spawn point. We can only have one of these per map. So regardless of where your hives are, well, you can put a honey spawn point literally anywhere on the map. So if you wanted to, you could put this right adjacent to the cereal factory, which is the only production that is going to be able to accept our honey. And then you can quickly come over here and transfer your honey to the dump point right there and then input your honey into the cereal factory. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this stuff in build mode. We're going to go to our animal section. We're going to tab over until we get over to our bees. And we have the small beehive, which we first looked at for $500. And when you do place it, do take note as to the direction for which the bees come out. For $1,500, we can place the four hives on a log. $2,700 will give us this round beehive. $250 for this small square one. And then $3,000 for this larger unit. $200 to put down, if you already don't have one, the honey spawn point. If you notice, only one item per farm is allowed to have a honey spawn point. So in single player, that's literally gonna be one per map. And then as far as productions go, well, the cereal factory for $240,000 is 
is the only production point that will accept honey as an input. Other things you can do with honey, well, you can sell it directly or at the farmer's market or at one of these small farmer's kiosks like the one we have here at the entrance to the farm on Riverbend Springs. They will accept your honey as well as other sell points on the map. And that is going to vary specifically to the map itself. Now, something else to keep in mind is that depending on the beehive, you're going to get a varying amount of honey. I have not gone through and done any sort of actual testing to see how much honey is spawned per hive. But what's important to note with respect to that comment is that the more hives you have, well, the more honey is going to spawn over time. Let's go ahead and move forward one month. And we'll see how much honey we get just out of the hives that are already placed at the farm, as well as those that are here at the farm where I was demonstrating, placing them down and what they were. So we have a total of 123 liters worth of honey already spawned here just by going overnight. So it's going to take a fair bit of hives to spawn an entire pallet of honey this honey pallet looks really nice we like the details on that and once enough time does go by you'll have a full pallet of honey full pound honey is going to be 1000 liters now with respect to what do you need other than hives and a honey spawn point with respect to honey well you can use a front loader like this Schaefer front loader that we have here and a set of front loader arms in order to transport your honey pallets. You might also want a flatbed truck or trailer like this International CV series in order to also transport your honey to and from the honey spawn point and either sell points or the production point in the cereal factory. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cereal factory recipe and see how much honey we need with respect to our cereal production. So for our chocolate cereal, we're gonna need to provide 10 units of honey, 10 units of chocolate, 36 units of oats, and 36 units of corn to get 20 units of cereal. Our long grain rice cereal, it's gonna be 15 units of honey and 40 units of long grain rice to get 15 units of cereal. Our raisin cereal, it's going to be 10 units of honey, 10 units of raisins, 40 units of oat, 40 units of corn, 420 units of cereal. And then we have our cereal rice, which again is going to be 15 units of honey, 36 units of rice, 420 units of cereal. So they have changed the cereal recipe from Farm Sim 22 to Farm Sim 25, which I think will make players use the cereal factory a little bit more since we don't have to have grapes and we don't have to have a grape processor in order to ultimately get raisins on the map for our cereal production. So I really like that aspect of FS25 as compared to FS22. So guys, that is basically the ins and outs, all things honey. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, please go ahead and click that like button, subscribe as well, and by all means, share this video with anyone else who is thinking about Farm Sim 25 or just loves a good bee story. Because you know what? Bees in FS25, I think, at least for me, are one of the most underutilized aspects that, in essence, really just gives us idle income because all we need to do is place these little guys down literally anywhere and then put down a honey spawn point and just wait. And over time, we'll get some honey that we can either sell or then use in order to further process other products into a finished good which is going to sell for pretty darn good money and until next time happy farming